Alright, we're back with video part number two. In part one, we were getting ready to hook up the B&K 1077B. And what we're going to do, we're going to simulate a plate drive voltage. And what we can do, we simply take the output lead from the B&K, the plate drive, we connect it to the plate cap at a 6LB6 making sure it's disconnected of course ground the chassis to the instrument and what we're going to look for and see if we have a picture now let's go back to the schematic so you can see what I'm talking about okay here's the 6LB6 we're talking about simulating that plate voltage we're going to put it right here here's the plate cap and if we get a picture, we've just proven that the horizontal sweep transformer is good, the rectifier, the voltage regulator, and the damper, and all of this associated circuitry. We can rule all of that out if we get a raster. If we don't have a raster, the problem lies after the horizontal output tube, and we can stop looking in this circuit and before. So let's take a look and see what happens when we hook up the B&K analyst to the plate cap. Now the analyst is on. It's in standby mode. So let's hook up our ground. And we'll simply disconnect the plate. And I'll put the camera down for a minute. Now we'll hook up the plate drive lead. And there we are. So let's warm the setup now. Let the TV warm up here. Now we're going to flip the analyst in the on. Let's see if we get a picture. Going in to on now. Look at that. We've got a picture. This is good. We've now proven that the sweep transformer is good. The yoke, the damper, the voltage regulator. Basically everything past the horizontal output tube is good. We don't worry about any of this. We got some little bark housing line. We don't have a keystone raster. The yoke's fine. Everything's good. So let's shut the setback off. We've just greatly simplified servicing procedures now. We've just eliminated a huge possibility of a big part being bad, like a sweep transformer. That's the last thing you want to have be bad in one of these. So let's take a look at the schematic again. Let me get my pointer here. There you go. My pointer is a screwdriver. Okay. We injected our plate drive and we got a picture. Everything was good like we discussed. All this stuff is fine. Now, we know that there's 
grid drive to the output tube, we had that minus 61 volts. The fuse is good. Let's check for this 120 volts at pin 3. Let's see what's going on there. Let's also track back a little bit. Okay, there's 390 volts B+. Plus. Goes to a 17K 5 watt resistor. Got this lytic here. Let's check these voltages out. Let's see if we got B+. Plus. I mean we should because that arrow indicates it's going back to a main junction and the fact that we have sound should be a dead giveaway that the B plus is there and working. So now what we need to do is flip the TV on its top and get access to the underside of the chassis. And that will allow us to have easy access to all the key parts. careful when you do this. You flip the TV on its side, try to hold as much weight as you can so you don't put all the force on the two pivoting legs. There we go. Just slide it into position here. some voltage checks. Now use your visual senses here too. Now in this case, that capacitor looks like it got kind of hot. Normally shouldn't be brown like that. We'll check that. Let's check our voltages too. Let's go back to that schematic real quick. Okay. We were going to check R264, which is a 17K 5 watt. Let's see what kind of resistance we have. And we'll also check the resistance of 470 ohm resistor here. And then, um, you know, we'll power the set up and we'll get some voltage checks after that. And we'll do those voltage checks and the rest of the repair in video number three.